Aloha and welcome back. Uh, this is Pokalai Nui. The time now is 7.34 and you are listening to Hawaiian Hopuri on radio station KWAI 1080 on your AM dial. Today is the 24th day of June in the year 2012 and I want to open this section of the program by uh, asking you the following question. If a police officer stops you as you are driving or you are a member or you are in an uh, automobile or whatever the circumstance may be and they ask you to prove your immigration status, first they ask, are you an American citizen? I would respond, no, I'm not. Then they say, well, can you prove that you are legally in the United States of America? How does one respond? who feels the way I do, that I am a citizen of the independent nation of Hawaii. It is an issue that many of us question, and uh, we ourselves have not come to a formula of what our response should be. Then we get into a sort of an argumentative mode, and then we attack the very person who is asking us <laughs> these questions. And they say, wait, wait, all I wanted to do was just ask the, the question. Uh, you know, <laughs> Carol Cox, who will be on the, uh, the air uh, after this program, had called in and uh, uh, said that the word that I was thinking of, that wood, uh, kalau ala in the Hawaiian language, it's a sandalwood, and it's absolutely correct. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Uh, the sandalwood, which is what was being traded. Uh, that's the English word of, of the tree and the, the bark that was being traded. It has a very fragrant smell, and many of the uh, Chinese uh, chest uh, would be made out of that wood, or they would put a block of sandalwood in the chest, and it would, uh, the fragrance would just cover the, uh, the inside of the chest. Okay, getting back to the subject that I was talking about. And thank you, Carol, again for your contribution. Uh, so the question then becomes, how do we respond? And first of all, I, I think what we should do is try to uh, always conduct our response in a pleasant way. Uh, but suppose you're in America, you're traveling, uh, you're in Arizona or Nevada or Texas, and uh, a person looks at you and say, oh, wow, you look uh, quite Hispanic. <laughs> Can you prove your American citizenship? And what do you say? I would say, no, I cannot because I'm not an American. I'm a Hawaiian. And uh, they say, well, are you here legally? And what do you say? Uh, well, according to the American laws, uh, we in Hawaii can travel to uh, America uh, freely, so I'm not illegal. Well, can you prove your identity? My usual response is, uh, I can identify myself, but where's the proof? I am the proof. This is my word. This is my. Th but where's the evidence? My word is my evidence. Uh, it's considered testimonial evidence. But do you have any documents? Uh, why do you insist on elevating documents above my very own word? Well, uh, we need some documentation. Well, let me write it on the paper for you and say that and sign my name to it and this is my verification of who I am. No, no, no. It needs to be a government document. You know, oftentimes they ask you for your ID, and you just tell them your name, and they say, no, 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 it has to be a... It's not enough. I want to see a, a document, a picture ID. So you take a picture, and you put your name on it, and you say, here's my picture ID. They say, no, it has to be a government ID. So you run into this constant... Uh, uh, circling around and they try to squeeze you into uh, accepting the uh, the government 
Okay. We'll uh, go to our telephones. Our telephone number here is 524 524- 1080 and uh, if you would like to call give us a call at that number aloha caller welcome to the program yeah good morning good morning you know many years ago when i was uh, well i was in the military but I, i'm from hawaii i was stationed in uh, uh san diego mm-hmm. and uh of course i'm mixed uh you know uh, chinese portuguese scotch hawaiian and whatnot mm-hmm. and we go across the border to uh tijuana, tijuana yeah and uh, when he crossed the border, uh, the, the agent there, uh, he asked you, when you come back into, he said, uh, oh, uh, where are you from? Uh, uh, what's your nationality? Mm-hmm. I said, I'm from Hawaii. Yeah. You know, and he said, oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay, pass. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't even question. He said, oh, are you American citizen? I said, I guess because, you know, I didn't have any accent or anything like yes, that. Yes, yes. I just said, yeah, I'm from Hawaii, and I have a family in the car. He said, uh, okay, mm-hmm. go. Mm-hmm. And it happened two or three times. There was no question as to, oh, uh, are you American citizen? Or, uh, uh, but I had to be in the military, of course. I yeah. could have shown my military ID card. He says, go on. He said, uh, have mm-hmm. a good day. It mm-hmm. was kind of strange. Yeah. <laughs> he took the word from Hawaii. He said, uh, in fact, one guy one could just went into conversation. He said, oh, my my brother-in-law uh, is, lives in Hawaii. So mm. there was no question at all. So it was, yeah. I just want to bring up this comment when, because, you know, in Arizona, there's this question about uh, what's your immigration status, what nationality. That's mm-hmm. all I had to say. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your call. And, uh, in uh, as, as part of that, and my response is, uh, you know, I was in the military, and uh, I had the opportunity of going to Tijuana. Uh, that was, in fact, before I joined the military. And in that time, when it wasn't really an issue, and you know, people know about Hawaii, and uh, so there's that kind of transaction. So for us who have that relationship or a person who uh, is aware of Hawaii and uh, is not so strident about the immigration laws, they may give you that response. So I've had that similar response. It may have been the same guy at the border (laughs) checking. (laughs) But times are changing so that employers themselves are not only asking but are required to have an applicant for a job prove their citizenship or their legal status within the United States. And so the question becomes, how does one do that, especially one who feels the way I do, that my legal status is that one, I am not an American citizen, so I'm not going to lie about it, although the Americans interpret the law in another way. And secondly, I cannot, quote, prove according to American dictates that my legal status in Hawaii is legitimate. Because if you're not an American citizen, there, then there needs to be some process by which you came within the borders of Hawaii. And so there must be documentation for it. From our perspective, we came within the borders of Hawaii because we were here before the American invasion, overthrow, and continued occupation. And yet, that basis does not seem to be acceptable by those people who are checking. And so you got to go through a whole rigmarole of having to educate these folks into your reason for being. So let's take uh, another perspective. Suppose you're not native Hawaiian or you have no Hawaiian blood. Then how do you prove 
your legitimacy in Hawaii, although your ancestors may have been in Hawaii for many, many years, had been Hawaiian citizens, and you continue to carry the emblem of Hawaiian citizenship by your knowledge of that history. The case really has not yet been brought, and uh, I look forward not necessarily to bringing the case myself, or myself being the client who puts the case forward, or acting as the attorney on that case. But it is something that may have to be brought sometime, and I think it is appropriate that we open it up for discussion so that we can have a common plan, a similar plan, how we are going to approach these matters. Our telephone number here is 524-1080. Let's go to our next caller. Aloha caller. Welcome to the program. Good morning, Boca. Yes, good morning. Yes, um, you know, concerning uh, uh, our citizenship and whatnot for Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not Hawaiian, but, you know, when I went to Europe, um, uh, you know how the Europeans treat the Americans there. I said, uh, yeah. I'm from Hawaii, so they treat me better. Mm -hmm. I brought some uh, Hawaiian flags with me. You know those small flags? Yes, yes. I would give them to the... The guy oh. that would take our luggage and when I say, hey, here's, I give him a tip and then I give him a flag. He said, what, what flag is this? You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he thought it was a, you know, a British. I said, no, it's a, a Hawaiian flag mm -hmm. from Hawaii. I'm from Hawaii, and I want you to have this so you know where it came mm. from. Wow, wow. In Hawaii, you know. Uh -huh. I did think Hawaii is not part of the United States, and mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. You know? mm -hmm. Because you know, my grandparents from way back they were immigrants and they were here and you know mm -hmm. um i had an uncle who's pure hawaiian and his ancestries were were uh they were here during the um, overthrow and mm -hmm. everything so mm -hmm. and uh I, I i i sympathize with you folks and with my cousins mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. half hawaiian cousin yeah and yeah so i i understand what's going on and mm -hmm. i really hope uh, we can resolve this thing uh in in the near future yeah, yeah. okay oh by the <laughs> way uh concerning the um the meeting I had with, we had at uh, the state capitol last week, Tuesday. On the bus uh, issue? Concerned the Medi Medicaid. Oh, yes. Yeah, it went very well. Um, we had uh, uh, somebody from MedQuest uh, from the state, and we had uh, Aloha Mohawk Care. Care. Yeah. And uh, John Mizuno got some feedback from the people who use the services for uh, transport, ground transport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they resolved the issue by getting uh, private... Um, Transport companies like the cab and some uh, some other ones to work with these people who are going to non-emergency medical mm. uh, thing, you know, like kidney dialysis especially. Right. So they can get there on time and get home on time because you know it's very difficult to go to that treatment and you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, some people were collapsing on the handy van because they were wow. so overwhelmed with the uh, long ride going home. Yeah, I see. And they, they felt yucky. You know, it's mm. very hard. Mm -hmm. But I, I think uh, it, it, it should work very well with uh, working a, a resolution to have a formal briefing with the uh, legislature. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, uh, so I, I think it, it went very well. Yeah. Okay, Volga. Okay, thank you for your Take call. Care, Take care. Aye, aloha. And uh, this last caller raises, I think, a very significant issue. Oftentimes when we talk about... Uh, Hawaiian nationalism, Hawaiian citizenship, uh, or the claim to be Hawaiian citizens, you do have those native Hawaiians who very easily can claim simply by bloodline that they can trace ancestry to Hawaii prior to the overthrow. But there are others who were also members or whose ancestors were either members of the Hawaiian nation or who may have come to Hawaii later and and yet they sympathize with and they identify with and if they could they would claim themselves as hawaiian nationals as well so what is the legal position for them to say that uh, i'm a hawaiian national well oftentimes when we trace ancestry and legitimize our citizenship or nationality. It is based on 
a bloodline relationship, which is a good and strong argument. Just by the mere fact of my being of that blood, I, that in itself says that uh, my ancestors were here uh, at a very early time. But there is something else that can also legitimize the claim to Hawaiian nationality. And that is not a creation of Poka Lainui, but that is a creation of the national government of Hawaii that said you need not be of the bloodline to be a Hawaiian citizen. It's a matter of loyalty, of allegiance, and for a period of time, placement in Hawaii. The law, I believe, had been five years rather than one year. And having been in Hawaii for five years and committing your uh, allegiance and loyalty to Hawaii, that was sufficient by Hawaiian law. Now, what that talks about is that your genealogy may not be one of, uh, uh, how do we say it, descendancy in terms of from parent to grandparent to great-grandparent and following it in that line. But your descendancy is based on your national genealogy and you assume, presume, or adopt as your genealogical claim a cultural genealogy, a historical genealogy, a nature genealogy. And so an argument can be built. Look, I lived here all my life so far. <laughs> and as a result of that, I claim that I am of Hawaii. And so I establish myself as a Hawaiian citizen, as a Hawaiian national, and this is my assertion. Can it be done? Of course it can be. And if I was not of the blood, I would certainly be making that claim. Okay? All right. So, if you have any bright ideas on how you can make that assertion, <laughs> give me a call. You know, I was at that, that meeting I talked about, the voyage of Aloha, and there were a lot of questions, and it really gave us opportunities to exchange ideas. I had a particular individual uh, who came up to me, and he says, you know, Poka, I come from Hawaii, and I don't know if it was Punahou or Iolani High School that he graduated from and subsequently moved to America. America and has spent many years in America, then came back home and has been home for about 10, maybe 15 years. And uh, having come back home, and he is not of the native Hawaiian blood, he identifies with the uh, movements and the uh, activities going on, trying to clean up nature and the rest, and really feels for the Hawaiian nationhood. His wife, very, very supportive of him. But he says the the problem he has is uh, not being accepted as a Hawaiian citizen because he does not have the blood. And I suggested to him that he was a victim of his own making, that he is constructing a definition of Hawaiian-ness by bloodline rather than by a sense of loyalty and allegiance to Hawaii. And as long as he accepts that definition, then he is in this state of uh, not confusion, but uh, um, competition or complex. Again, the word escapes me. So it's a matter of his own definition that will free him. And understanding that, he was uh, rejoicing about now having a deeper understanding so that as he made choices, he can more clearly understand these choices. Hmm. All right. Uh, this is almost the end of this uh, program. I did notice that we had one more caller, and I could have taken that call. But it may be a little late uh, right now, so I want to thank all of you for joining me. The reason I seem to be cutting off the programs in more uh, smaller chunks is because as we post these uh, YouTube videos on the Internet, it is much easier to accept the shorter... Uh, portions of it so that uh, I'm sort of uh, cognizant of every half hour then uh, we had to terminate or oh, 28 and a half minutes then it's easier to send up or it's easier to place on Olelo 
television. So that's a reason for this. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining me. We are produced by the Hawaiian National Broadcast Corporation. And, of course, the opinions expressed in this program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of this radio station or of the Hawaiian National Broadcast Corporation. Ha ha ha.